Many traditions ascribe consciousness to other species than human beings. The plant and animal world, the world of nature, and so on. Do we share consciousness with other species? And if so, how so? If you accept that everything in the universe exists in consciousness, mm. or if you accept that consciousness is the substratum of all reality, of all experience, then everything is conscious. And the difference is only degrees of the expression of consciousness. In the human form, with an organized brain, we are able to express our experience. But consider a person who has a brain damage and cannot speak or cannot control his body. And there are many examples of that, people who are paralyzed. They're fully conscious inside. They just can't express themselves. And if all the human species were like that, we would never know what it means to communicate consciously. And if an alien species came, they would say, oh, these are vegetables. They're not human. But it's the same thing. If you go down to the animal level, you see in dogs, in monkeys, a sophistication of emotional experience, even a kind of a intellectual, a logical expression, but they do not have the capacity to organize it and express the way human beings can. And if you just go back and there's as if a continuity, just dimming the scope of expression, until you go back all the way to the crystalline structure of rock. And you can say, oh, it's dead. And yet, when you take a random mix of supersaturated solution of salt or any other crystal, and you put one seed of salt. Over a few days, the whole thing grows to become this perfect crystal. It's got parallel sides, flat sides, sharp edges. And science would tell us it's just a random accumulation of all the little molecules falling into place to make this perfect crystal. If you think about it, if you look at the process of each molecule, it's not random. If two sides of a crystal can be perfectly parallel, it's as if things on this side knew what the other side was. And there had to be something synchronizing the two random molecules, isn't it? And it's as if at that level, it's the consciousness organizing itself, and that's the most it can do. So you can even state it in a different way. The consciousness sleeping in matter wakes up in plants, feels in animals, and thinks in the human. And we are nothing but thinking, feeling, living rock. Because we're eating plant. Plant is made of rock. It's the same molecules which have been rearranged. Molecularly, we are not, atomically, we are not different from rock. The difference is only the awakening of consciousness, which has organized these molecules in a way that it can express itself. So when, when people say only human beings are conscious, I think what they mean is only human beings are conscious that they are conscious, that they have mm. self-consciousness. And even mm. that is dubious, but I think that's what they mean, that we are conscious that we are conscious. But there are other animals that, which recognize themselves. I mean, the mirror test of consciousness is, you know, you show an animal a mirror, and does it see it as another animal or itself? And elephants, chimpanzees, apes, orangutans, dolphins, whales, they all pass that test. They clearly recognize themselves as a being. The question is, how far down does consciousness go? And like you, I believe it has to go all the way down. The current scientific worldview says that matter is fundamental. Not even, but the physical world, not even matter, we don't even know what matter is, but physicality, the material world is fundamental, mm -hmm. and the material world isn't conscious. Rock is dead, that's the current view. And so somewhere up the evolutionary line, something magic happened, and unconscious, inanimate rock somewhere mm -hmm. became conscious, because we're clearly conscious. And that is a huge, huge problem for science. And to me, this is, a, this is what the biggest challenge to the scientific paradigm, the scientific worldview, because consciousness is the one thing we cannot doubt and the one thing we cannot explain from a scientific point of view. So you have a real anomaly here, a real problem. 
And at the moment, science is trying to work out, well, maybe it comes from this in the brain, maybe it comes from that. They're, they're chasing things around the whole time. I think they're going to have to face the fact that the whole worldview is ultimately wrong and that consciousness is always there. Now, I don't mean the sort of, you know, like our consciousness thinking, but there is an element of interiority, subjectivity. There's no, there's no way you can draw a line and say above the line, consciousness comes in below the line, there's no consciousness. It's always there. But as life has evolved, so the interior world has evolved with it and got richer and richer and richer. Until now we have, you know, the incredibly rich interior worlds that we live in. But it's always been there, I think, always been there, right from the very beginning. <laughs>